Good morning, everybody. Um, I haven't made these like I used to with my videos, and I've had people comment sometimes, like, uh, good for you for keep going with telling people things that they need to hear, even though you're not getting a lot of views. These were never meant for views. I didn't think I was going to become a YouTube legend or whatever people think this day and age where you want to be famous, you want to be somebody important. Um, every one of us is important to God, to our parents, to hopefully to our parents. Um, some people get a shitty end of the stick with that, to be honest with you. Um, and it does affect them. But one of, one of my biggest things is, and Pastor Jake told me this at one point, my dad used to tell me this, um, you're being a great father. Like people, people see you from an aspect of in public or that you do certain things with your kids. My dad got to see me act uh, crazy some moments. Um, he did. Uh, people saw a different side of my dad. I'm sure they see a different side of a lot of people behind closed doors or where we think we're hiding this, whatever it is. Um, and I have a very blunt and passionate personality. So like uh, one of my friends, Andrew, that I've known for a very long time, um, great guy, great people person. Um, wish I had more of a spirit like him, to be honest with you, but each one of us has our own spirit. Some of us are like Paul or, or Peter, where you uh, crucify me upside down. Uh, very blunt, very extreme. Others are very taken back and cautious and are good at listening. And I'm always, before you can even get stuff out of your mouth, which hurts my marriage, it hurts my uh, relationships with my brothers, my family, other people. But, but by the time they're almost done with what they're saying, and I'm, I'm listening, but I'm not really listening. Um, and, and it's because I just I have so much stuff going on in my brain. It's all the time. Uh, very hyper active, very passionate, very, oh, 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 I can fix this. I can fix this. I, I, I know where you're going. And sometimes people just need people to listen. I haven't always been the best at that. Um, it's one of my, and I'm starting off with a not so strong suit um, to let people know that we all struggle with things. We all go through things. Uh, and I think people forget that in this generation and in, in things in life, like, we're all trying to go through different things in our lives. And it's, I don't know, it can be overwhelming. People struggle with different uh, depression, anxiety, with mental health issues. With, and, and a lot of that, uh, I think, is we've kind of strayed away from a foundation that I once was taught um, in my childhood growing up. And I had a firm foundation in faith. My parents went to church, Bible study, uh, Sunday schools. They, those were important. Uh, and people knew they were important and that it should be a foundation that you set in your life, just like any other foundation. Like you would set a building on a foundation, a firm foundation on concrete, on footings, on or that building won't stand very long. We need to have those firm foundations in our life. And I, I was given one of faith. It doesn't mean I didn't do crazy things later on. Uh, one of my things was train a child in the way they should go. And when they are older, they will not depart from it. Uh, my dad always said, well, what happened to you? And I said, when they are older, they will not depart from it. It doesn't mean you'll always stay on that path. I, I mean, you have the parable of the sun. One of my dad's uh, favorite things was there's nothing new under the sun. I used to come to him when I was young. I'm very passionate, like I said, and tell him, you know, the world's so bad. It's getting so bad. Uh, there's people fornicating. There's people doing this. There's people. And, and I, I, I did not follow uh, like I should have my father's instruction. I did not heed it correctly um, or my mother's. And in doing so, it led me down a lot of paths that were twisty and windy and sent me to a life of prison and other things um, where there was this side of me, I, I call it the Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde syndrome, but there was this side of me that um, was very passionate, very loving, very kind, wanted to help everybody. And then there's this side of me that was very angry, very pissed off from a lot of tragedies that had happened in my past. Um, and I kind of learned it <laughs> too late in life, but a lot of the deaths I didn't deal with, we kind of... I don't want to say we swept them under the rug, but we just kept, we kept grinding and we kept going and we kept, um, my dad used to like the old Westerns and one of them, uh, was Wyatt Earp, um, was a big one, Doc Holliday, he used to like those people, they were grunt, blunt, um, and just the, <sighs> sorry, I'm, I get overwhelmed sometimes even thinking about some of the things I'm thinking about, but. We're all going through this thing called life. There's nothing new under the sun. And, and the point, I, 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 my mind goes so many different ways. The point I want to try to make is um, whether you be passionate, whether you are struggling with anxiety, whether you struggle with uh, depression, whether you struggle with emotions, some of this has to do with a lot of the foods that are processed and GMOs and all these things. Like um, 
they're a lot worse for our brain and our brain is a muscle that needs to be worked on too. But I tell people at work all the time, like, you know, some people don't, didn't have very good parents. They don't have a very good foundation, but all of us can find a foundation in faith. All of us can find a foundation in Christ. And it's on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. And even in my life, there's times that I, I, I don't pray when I should pray. Um, he knows Christ for hours, but refused to rest in him. Lord, he's not the best of men, but Lord, I know he really trusts you. And lately, I can't understand why he's not thinking of you. And you later get to the end of the song. Uh, that's a Lecrae one. And it's the person that I've been praying about is really me. Sometimes we need to pray for ourselves. Like, I, I, I teach my kids to wake up, pray, be thankful they open their first two blessings, their eyes. Uh, me and Natalie go over, my wife, um, go over little Bible studies at night. Um, and then we pray. And it doesn't mean we're, we're always, sometimes it's yelling at the kids and like, everybody needs to listen. Everybody needs to get to bed. Everybody needs to do this. Like, stop getting up. Stop getting up. I know any parent can relate to this. Like, in all realisticness, you can watch shows on families and all the BS that they put on TV and news and everything else. And it seems like everybody's sugarcoating and just doing everything perfect. And every parent struggles with getting their kids laid down. Every parent struggles with kids not listening. Like, it, it, it is human nature. I don't do the sinful nature because it's a sinful flesh. Another thing I was taught by my dad, um, Christ didn't come and die to his nature of mankind. He came and died to the flesh. And all of us have a flesh, a sinful flesh, that desires certain things that God doesn't want us to seek because those things lead to a life of very harsh and hard realities that come because we fo focus on the flesh more than we focus on the spirit. And Paul constantly talked about that. Um, I think all of us have to, it's checks and balances. Um, one of my dad's things was a pie chart. Uh, and in the pie chart was like 25% guy, 25% work, 25% family, school, other activities. And really the circle needs to have a circle around it that's God. And God needs to be involved in all of those things. Thomas Jefferson knew that. That's why he wrote the Constitution the way he wrote it. And now people use it the wrong way. Where he wrote separation of church and state was so the state could never come into the church and regulate all the things that the church is doing. Because the church, if you don't have God, if you don't have that foundation, if you don't have that person guiding you, how do you have anything else in life? You don't. So the, the separation of church and state was the state to stay out of the church, not the church not to invade the state and let them know, like, you have to have this guide. You have to have this compass. You have to have this moral guideline, these, these blueprints of faith that come from the Bible. And I know everybody's like, well, those are written by men. So is every science journal. So is every news article. So is every YouTube video. So is, but the Bible was inspired by God and God breathed. Um, 2 Timothy 3.16. All, all scripture was God breathed. So, when you, when you put that kind of mix into it, and I know there's a lot of different versions of the Bible now. They have to change it, copyright it, do all those things. But it's still a foundation and a firm foundation that we need to base all of our things off of. But, I don't know, like all these videos kind of go all over the place. But my biggest one is uh, my dad uh, taught me a lot of sayings, a lot of quotes. I do it with my kids. Um, think before you act, think before you speak, be loving and kind, lead by example, uh, treat others how you want to be treated. Um, what you do in little areas, you'll do in big areas. Like I, I try to use some of these things so my children learn how to ground themselves and how to have a balance in life uh, by using some of these quotes. My dad wrote me a lot of quotes um, as I grew up and said a lot of the different things that stuck with me. And even now when he's gone, I, I can hear myself. I can hear him saying things to me, but I know they're from God. Um, and if our children are not our main focus, I don't care if you're rich, poor. I recently, uh, Kobe Bryant had died and he was a man of faith. I didn't know that. Um, I don't really watch sports. Don't really care. I don't idolize people. I don't watch singers and athletes and all the other things like great for you. You're just another human being that does something and gets paid more as a profession. But whether you're rich or poor, we all get a dash between two dates and all of us are going to clock out at some time. My cousins did it at a very young age. My son did at a very young age. Um, there's people that go when they're younger and there's people that go when they're older and there's people that go in the, in the middle of this thing. And my uncle actually had a really good thing that it, life is like a train station. Like some people are getting on, some people are getting off. That's the end. And some people are going to be on the train for a long time. So, but whatever point you're at in that getting on and getting off of life, there, there is something afterwards. There is an eternity. There is something else. And the, the biggest thing, like I said, whether you're rich or poor, we all get a dash between two dates. The biggest focus is not on how many uh, awards you win or how many Oscars or how many uh, titles, trophies, whatever it is, rings, championship rings, uh, 
Whatever, whatever these things are, you could be a construction worker. You could be uh, the grunt of the grunt that cleans hotel rooms. Like, and, and thank you. Who, who, who would want to come in and do that so you have a clean place to stay or lay your head at night? There's people that do certain jobs, and it doesn't make mean you're less or more or your status. It doesn't make define who you are. It means all of us are doing a certain thing in life to produce a certain thing for somebody else. Some do it as a, a way to, to produce a movie for us or whatever, but it doesn't make them any better or worse. They're just another human being that also deals with flesh and spirit. And hopefully we're feeding the spirit more than the flesh. But my biggest thing is our children. If, if you're, I, I don't care if you're, like Kobe Bryant died with his daughter in the thing. There's other people that died in that plane wreck too. Like they're, they're to me, just people. Um, now one made a lot of money to play a game, put a little ball in a little hoop, and I make fun of that sometimes. But hey, hey if you love playing a game, great. You, you practiced, you did that, you were good at it, awesome. Um, I don't like that we can fill coliseums and not fill a church. But he, he went to church that morning before he died, and I think that's awesome that him and his wife also found it very important that there was faith. You have to have faith. You have to have that foundation. And I do it with my kids. I do construction work. I do roofing. Um, I write. I do messages. I, there's, there's nothing I'm never not doing to try and help somebody. Um, and I think that's the biggest thing as we walk through this life. Um, and again, as parents, we don't always do the right thing or the perfect thing because, like my dad said, we didn't get a book. We, we do have a book, the Bible, that helps us parent, and there is nothing new under the sun. So there's things that you can teach your kids, and hopefully when they're older, they do not depart from it. Uh, I know some people go off on their own little things once in a while, and I did. Um, my brothers didn't follow that path, and thank God, I hope I didn't want them to or anybody else, but I, I, I just kind of put my head down and barreled through. But I hope, we all hope that our kids have a better life than us, but there has to be discernment. There has to be discipline. There has to be guidance. There has to be morals. There has to be boundaries. There has to be learning. There, it, this whole thing is learning. As a parent, you're learning. Uh, some of our kids have different personalities. We all have a different personality. Mine's very blunt, passionate, and forceful. Others are very taken back, like the disciples I was talking about. Our, our kids all have different personalities. Some you can be very stern with, and they, they, they take that, and it's like, oh, yeah, Dad, okay, cool. Yeah, sorry. Others, it's... Oh, why'd you yell at me? And it's it, it hurts your heart. Like, um, <clears throat> there's times I've spanked my kids. There's times I've um, smacked them in the mouth for talking back to their mom. Uh, but I also sit down and in love, tell them, you know, I love you. I, do, I don't want to have to do that. That, But it's a very stern, quick thing. And then I also explain with love and discernment why I did it. It's never just a beat your kids. Like, that's nuts. Like, why would you beat the thing that you're trying to mold into something great? Um. But th that being said, our, our children are going to be your biggest legacy. It won't be a trophy ring. It won't be uh, how many <clears throat> balls you dunked or how many end zones or how many championship rings or how much money you made or whatever your job, whatever your title. The greatest thing that you ever do in life is produce another human being. And when we do that, the greatest thing that you can do from that is guide them. But it has to be on a foundation of faith, discipline, morals, values, and in a so they can come up having a solid foundation. If they don't have that solid foundation, you teach it, I don't really want to push religion on my kid. This isn't a religion, it's a relationship. This is not all your other religions that have certain attributes about God. This is God making himself, in, making himself known to his creation in Christ. And that's, that's awesome. I, I don't know why we wouldn't accept that. I get people want to live however they want to live, and we some even Christians live in grace blankets. I call it the grace blanket because we just live in these... Uh, you know, God loves me and I'm forgiven for all my sins. So I can do whatever I want. And we, we, we really got to be careful with that. You should be growing throughout your life and getting better, not getting worse. And producing fruit daily, like with helping people and teaching your kids to do the same. Manners maketh man is another one of my things that I teach my kids. Um, be loving. Be kind. Treat people how you want to be treated. Like everybody wants compliments. Everybody wants something more. Like you, so, so, do, so do our children. And, and they're watching and they're learning, even the goods and the bads. And I always tell my kids... Take me and your mom's bads and try to not do them and take the goods that we teach you and learn from that and be better. Be better. That's what you should want for all of your children. The greatest thing you're ever going to do in life is, is create another human being and, or help another human being. If you can't, if you don't have kids, you can't have kids. Great. You, there's other young people around you coming up that need guidance. They need discipline. They need discernment. They need morals. They need values. They need more than just staring at their phone and <laughs> we, we, we need to give. Or the next generation is going to be completely screwed. And I hope we're guiding our kids in, in that discernment, in that learning, in that growing, in that, in that love. They have to have that love. Um, in the discipline and all the other things. But it's, it's, it's a whole, as one, 
not little separate things. So if I can say anything, my dad never really wrote a will. Um, I, but I mean, I got enough of life with him. If I ever go before my kids expect it, I, I don't think anybody ever expects death, but if I do, they, they, they were my everything. It didn't matter how much money I made. It didn't matter what I could give them. It mattered, excuse me, they were my everything. From my oldest that isn't listening right now and kind of has her head buried in the sand, poor me, to my youngest. Uh, I expect the world of you guys always look out for each other, always keep growing in faith, and always keep being who you need to be. Lead by example, like I tell you every day before school, um, and stand for truth always. That is the only thing that matters when this clock gets punched, when it, there's no more. Like, we, we, we go on to be in eternity, or we go on to be in another place that is, I don't really hear people talk about sin and hell anymore, but... It's a real, it's a real place. So, um, hopefully you guys do that and you were my everything in life. Um, you were the greatest thing I ever produced. And I'm sorry for the times I was too overbearing. And I thank God for everything that you do from this point on and take the good things and run with them. And I love you guys and always keep it up. And then love God, love people, love you all. That's what we're supposed to be doing in life. Loving, learning, living is one of my church's things. Um, there's little sayings and quotes that can help us just grow. And get overwhelmed, <laughs> take the time to stop, take a breath, pray. Um, we all go through stuff, all of us. There's goods and bads and everything, and it's what makes life life. So take that, run with it. I'm proud of you guys. I always will be, even your shortcomings. I had shortcomings, and my dad loved me through them. And I feel for every kid that didn't have that support and that love. And I want it to be for every kid, and I can't even reach that many kids, but we try. Our church does different groups. They do outreaches. I've tried many youth ministries, all those things. Um, I always want to help the next generation. But focus on God more than you focus on self and learn to have a relationship and walk with Him in life. And it's not a perfect walk. It's an up and down, twisty loops and everything else. But do it in faith. Love God, love people, love you all.